Hey guys, I'm Red Herring, and we're going to be looking at another StarCraft 2 cast with uh, Kinetics, the red Terran player spawning on the bottom right of Shakura's plateau, and uh, spawning up at the at the top left of the screen is myself, the blue Protoss player. So this is going to be a PVT, and I know I haven't cast one of these in a little while, but i um, pretty excited for this game because, you know, I just played it actually today, and... Uh, it was, there were some very, very nail-biting, nail-bite-inducing moments, Let's say that. So, hope you guys are pumped, and we are going to kick this off with not a proxy. As you guys um, may or may not be surprised, I do actually proxy one gate, expand a lot of the games that I cast. This is not one of those times, and uh, I will be putting the, the pylon off at the ramp of my own expansion, and uh, sending the, the uh, scout over right after to uh, see and see if we can find the uh, the Terran player so um, Terran player meanwhile actually not walling off his ramp so a little bit interesting um, a lot of Terran players will put the supply depot there and put the racks back or put just both the supply depot and the racks up at their ramp um, but this guy is not so um, I guess he doesn't want to lose any of that precious mining time he's actually going to be scouting down for any sort of proxy so it's actually it's actually quite unfortunate that I did not um, choose to proxy this game as he would have scouted that. So that's just a very, very cautious turn player kinetics um, is proving to be. There's the gas going down, so immediately I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking, okay, this is not going to be any sort of quick um, bunker expand off one rack. This is going to be at least a marauder pressure or a reaper pressure. Um, probably one or two racks and uh, in response I'm actually going for this gateway and you might be thinking this is super late and this is actually because I actually waited to throw down that gateway um, hoping that I could get an expand off and once I scouted the gas um, I actually threw that gateway down so it's a bit late and the gas is a little bit late too but overall not too big of a deal as uh, it's better to actually get that late gateway than go for a 17 nexus um, with a gas um, having seen a gas because uh, a, a Terran player can go for a Reaper which will just destroy any sort of 17 Nexus um, or just a whole bunch of other pressure um, that can be uh, that that's really hard to deal with uh, unless you get that gateway down semi early so just, just tickling with that probe getting as much damage as I can on those SCVs as possible it doesn't have any kills but it's okay um, that marine wards him off and he's just gonna go back probably gonna uh, probably gonna be at a tower and Cybernex Core going down, then I'm going to bring this probe out, I'm going to put my expand down um, a little bit later, but playing it safe, looks like it'll pay off because he is actually going for a reactor and then another barracks. so there's going to be a lot of marines coming out of this guy. Um, might choose to put a tech lab on this one, um, or might just go for a lot of marines. There's the uh, probe chilling at the tower, and that expand going down, let's see what I choose to do after this. Going for that warp gate and that stalker, extremely standard, as I do need to scout. Make sure that um, I know if he's like what the expand timing is. As a, uh, you know, with one gas on um, Terran, it could be anything from a 1 1 1 all in to just a, just a Reaper expand. So definitely need to get that stalker out so I can probe up the front, see if there's bunkers, see if there's expand up. If there's no expand, I gotta brace for an all in. So this is. Pretty standard, um, and uh, let's see. He's actually getting yeah, getting a tech lab. So interesting choice. A lot of Terran players will actually go tech lab first, and then put two more racks and get their double marine production that way. It's the equivalent of this build, but it gets you um, tech up a little bit earlier as opposed to a lot of marines up earlier. So this is a more aggressive way of going about the two racks, and we'll see if that pays off for him. If he's going to be able to do anything with that, my stalker is. Uh, right up the ramp there and might choose to poke in here but seeing this I'm like okay there's no expansion at the 5 minute 40 second mark it could mean because he actually built it up here and just hasn't floated down but after I poke up there and see like 5 or 6 marines I'm like okay um, this is this is going to be some sort of all in um, there could be banshees it could be tanks and it looks like his factory is coming up right now with his double gas um, in response to that as you can see I'm actually putting down that robot facility because I need to know um, what exactly he's doing and brace for banshees um, if they are indeed coming uh, so that expand is uh, kicking in nicely for me I'm at 29 30 harvesters now uh, income a little bit higher than his um, but you know as this expand uh, continues to, to pay off for me it becomes increasingly harder for kinetics to actually do anything with his with his timing push so there's a couple of crisp timings he can hit and this is one of them he's actually going for siege mode 
Siege tank on the way, has a lot of harvesters for being on one base, but that's a sign of very good Terran player. He's actually pre-making harvesters so that he can grab like 10 of them and bring them along with his marine force. That's what I presume he would do as, uh, you know, if you if you only make like 20 harvesters as Terran um, and you, you want to bring 10 of them, then you only have like 10 harvesters left on your base. And if you're all in fails, then you're completely screwed as opposed to being only very screwed. Um, <laughs> Starport going down. I'm not sure if this is for Banshee. I'm actually thinking this is not for Banshee. I'm thinking this is for a Medivac just because, uh, you know, if he was going to go Banshee, he would not have enough for Cloak. Just the gas intensiveness of the Stim and the uh, Siege Tanks is just going to make Banshees not really viable at this point. So there's my Observer coming up. Another Observer. Um, so two Observers total have a bunch of Gateways. There's that very nicely timed scan. He sees the Observer, he sees all my Gateways. Oh, missing one, but sees most of them. And uh, let's look at my Income tab, 43 to 25. And uh, as you can see, uh, you know, this this expansion's done really, really nicely for me. Um, there goes that Pylon. We'll see though, I don't actually have like any units at all. If we look at the units tab, I have two sentries, two stalkers, one zealot against 26 marines, two tanks. So this is going to be very interesting to see if I can actually hold this. Here is the moment of truth. This is gonna this is gonna come down to this, this, this uh, death push here. All these all these SCVs coming. He actually didn't leave that many as a base at all. There's a couple tanks. He could pick them up in this medvac and uh, bring them along with them. There's that probe, catches wind of all these guys. He's thinking, oh crap, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys. Um, there's Observer, so I can see the troop movements of what he's doing here. And that pylon there allows me to warp in two zones. I'm going for the counterattack. So smart by me. He's actually getting combat shields there, but I don't know if he's going to be in time. There's Observer positioned at my ramp, and I see, okay, I have four sentries. I can hold this ramp for a long time, but there is the brilliance of this all in. There's that one medevac that allows him sight. He can now blast away at the sentries trying to force field this ramp all day in addition to dropping marines up on the on the uh, high ground like he's doing right there and that allows all of these tanks to be sieging up there's my gateways i'm trying to cram immortals out as fast as possible there are the stalkers getting shelled by tanks and i'm like moving in i have my guardian shield up there's the zealots trying to take as much damage as they can but the marines shredding through the sentries shredding through the zealots um, I back up off this ramp. These suckers trying to do the best they can to will down these SUVs, but they're trapped. They can't really run up here because the results or, or the excuse me, the Marines are shred them. The Marines actually targeting on that nexus, and uh, these two immortals um, trying to trying to save uh, save the ramp here, along with those sentries there. Those suckers being left for dead. The probes, the probes getting just totally annihilated, and those two zealots working on a racks. I believe they killed one racks there. Haven't actually gone for the eco lines. There is the death push coming up on the ramp and force field going down barely saves the ramp there that was really really close the marines dropped on the low ground so the high ground and here we go dark shrine coming up this is my response to the all in i had that twilight council so i'm like okay i'm gonna go dark shrine i just need to buy enough time to get one or two dark templar out my zealots hacking away at this tech lab not what they need to be focusing right now those marines targeting down all the pylons i have no pylons even if i got this dark shrine up I would not have enough final to go for that all in. And all his marines overstim though. He only has one medevac, but these three tanks doing so much damage on these immortals and uh, barely not taking whole damage on those immortals, but um, those hardened shields really saving it. I don't have two gateways left trying to get this pylon up. I know I need to get one, at least one Dark Temple out. I actually snipe that one tank, but sacrifice one immortal and maybe a stalker is all out there too. I don't know if that was worth it. There goes that one pylon. I need a pylon. Uh, to power my gateways for this dark shrine. This is so close. I'm whittling away marines like crazy, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't. I, I don't have a gateway that's powered. My dark shrine is up, but I need to get this powered. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't look like I'm actually able to take this. There goes that one gateway there. I actually decided to throw up a gateway. I'm like, okay, I need, I need a dark templar right now. There's that one gateway. It's not on cooldown. There it goes. One Dark Templar warping in to the, to, the, to the base there, and that one soccer trying to save it does not look like that's going to happen. There's the Dark Templar out. Look at my zealots cleaning up house. Those have a couple kills each. Those STVs are gone. He actually scans, picks off that Dark Templar, and I have one gateway, a singular gateway here. There's the cooldown right there, warming up almost there, and there we go, going for that Dark Templar, and he doesn't have enough energy for scan. I forced the lift off with those two zealots in his main, and now he's trying to target down as many probes as possible. I have my one Dark Templar hacking away at that tank. I need to clear these guys out, and uh, maybe I can actually take this game. He doesn't look like he has any detection. Running a nice round on the probes on those Marines there, and then going straight back to work, killing the last tank. 
Let's look at the harvesters. Zero harvesters. He has no workers, and he has just one orbital command. Has enough for a scan right about now. And uh, has two tanks chilling in his medback. But things are not looking good for him. I think with the close call, um, you know, as close of a call as that was, I was able to get that Dark Templar out. I mean, two Dark Templar to be exact. And I was actually able to, it uh, looks like, clear out this all in. But, oh, trying to do a little tank micro with... Uh, with these, oh, we barely saves them, but that was really not that efficient. Shouldn't have been targeting the Immortal there, and he realizes, okay, this is not so good. Has a, a one Harvester there trying to make ourselves possible, but the Zealot's being extremely annoying, but still, this one medvac could maybe do some damage. Does not really look like, uh, doesn't really look like this guy's in a very good spot right now. He doesn't really want to use the energy on his command center for a mule, because um, he does need it for a scan if he has any hope of winning this game. But, uh, Wow, units lost tab, you know, I lost a lot more, but keep in mind, I actually have outspent him in everything, I just had so much economy from that um, fast expand I took, and uh, trying to chase down this one remaining harvester, keep in mind, you know, there's one harvester here, and I'm, I'm cranking out stuff as best I can, <sighs> wow, so, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this does not look good for him, he has one harvester, it's about to go down, and uh, let's speed this up a little bit, there we go. He just leaves the game <laughs> right there as I come in with a with a final push. But um, that was one of the most one of the most intense games, uh, PVT all in games I've played. Just because I know if I had not gotten that dark shrine out, I would have lost. Those were too many marines um, and tanks to be able to hold it with a standard force. I needed a game changer, and Dark Templar was that game changer. And uh, just trying, I remember scrambling in game, scrambling to get pylons, gateways, anything up because I needed. I had the Dark Shrine tech. I just couldn't warp in the Dark Templar, and it was infuriating to watch the marines come in and kill all my pylons and and all that. But guys, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, um, you know. When uh, when things when things look tough, when it looks like you're not gonna be able to pull out, just make a dark shrine. That's the moral of the story. But um, yeah, comment, rate, subscribe. I'll have more content out soon, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.